So in this video, I'll be doing an unboxing, setup and review of the OneKey Pro cryptocurrency hardware wallet. When I looked at the original OneKey lineup a few years back, they were still fairly new as a company. Their devices were lightly modified Trezor clones, and I'm keen to see how things might have changed with the OneKey Pro. In terms of full transparency, I didn't actually pay for this device. The sample was provided to me late last year sometime, and I uh, decided to finally get around to having a look. So. Let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So when it comes in the box, this is what you get. All right, so this is everything that comes in the box. Basically, we've got a bunch of paperwork here. So just some getting started guide, some good security tips, uh, a more detailed set of documentation and some sort of stickers and other sort of marketing stuff. This one comes with three recovery sheets with enough space for a full 24 word seed with again useful security tips written on the sheet in a couple of different places, including in other languages, which is always nice. Also comes with a USB to USB-C cable, and then we have the device itself. So there is definitely no shortage of security seals and other sort of stuff on the device. So we'll just get all that open as well. And they've definitely gone for a very premium looking sort of finish with this device. Really looks very similar to, you know, like a small smartphone or something like that. And let's see if it comes with enough charge to turn it on. I'm guessing one of these buttons does that. There we go. Right, so let's just walk through the initial setup. So we'll choose English. All right, so I'll just say create new wallet. And, yeah. and while the checksum is better on 24, I'm just going to go with 12 for the sake of simplicity and speed on this video. And we'll set the pin to fingerprint. Nice. So where? Ah, okay. So this is a fingerprint scanner. It's rejecting most of the touches that I try to make. Like it's a lot more temperamental than any sort of fingerprint scanner on any smartphone that I've used. There we go. We've got enough. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Fingerprint added. My goodness. Wallet is ready. Continue. Ready to back up. All right. So it gives us some good security warnings. We'll say back up. All right. This is the recovery phrase. I will just transcribe that out onto one of these. Okay. So I'll say continue. Now let's see, how many words is it going to verify? This is great. We verified all of the words, which is especially important for a 12 word seed, not cutting any corners there. And our backup is safe and ready to go. So we can safely and securely store that. Also, I'll just continue over here on an Android smartphone. There we go. That's just taking us to the download page on their website. We'll download it off Google Play. And there we go. So that's the app there. So we'll just say install. All right. And we'll say open. Welcome to One Key Connect Hardware Wallet. Okay. So I'll just say start connection. Allow. And I'll click next over here. We'll see if it shows up. Oh, yeah, there it is. One Key Pro. We'll say pair. Punch in that number. All right, so now I'm going to do a genuine check, which is good. Verification successful. Great. Well, it is ready. So the first thing we'll do before we receive any funds there is a firmware update, which is being offered to us. So let's just do that process. Yep, so we'll just do that update now. We have done all of these things and we'll say continue. All right, we're done. That took ages, but we did update every possible different piece of software that could be updated on this device. So let's just send some Bitcoin there. So if I go in there and just hit receive and I'll just say verify on device. Oh, yes, we've got to unlock this. There we go. We can see that that address matches on the device. And again, it's nice over here. I can press QR and I can actually scan that QR code directly with my wallet. So I've just sent some Bitcoin there. So I'll just say done. 
Oh yes, and it shows me the QR code over here once I've confirmed it. But those funds have already been sent, so I can now just close this. There we go. So we can see that unconfirmed transaction has already showed up on the balance, even though it's not showing up down here as a transaction at this time. Oh, that's nice. And so for Bitcoin, basically all of the different address formats that it supports are all there natively in the app, and we can just sort of toggle through all of them. So the question is, can we send unconfirmed funds? Looks like the answer is yes. So I'll just scan a QR code. Okay, so it doesn't like that Bitcoin prefix at the start. Yeah, okay. All right, so there's that. And let's see, can I just click to send the full amount? Yes, I can. So I'll just say preview. And there we go. So it's basically got the transaction details here, which is again nice. We can send, just send the funds even though they're unconfirmed. And there we go. So we can verify that the transactions are what we expect over here. And if it is, we can just say continue. Check the fees, say continue, slide to sign, transaction signed. Now back over here. There we go, transaction submitted, just like that. That was nice and painless. And in terms of all the other coins and stuff it supports, you know, there is a whole bunch of stuff here and you can see the full list on their website. So let's have a look over here on the device. So if we swipe up to show apps, what can we do? If we go into Connect App Wallet, so what else can we use this with? So we can use it Bluetooth. Oh, that's really cool. So we can use it with the OneKey Wallet and the OKX Wallet. Oop, hang on. We can use it over USB with OneKey Wallet with MetaMask or with OKX, or we can use it also with a QR code using OneKey Wallet and MetaMask. So we can scan. Okay, that's interesting. So we can scan QR codes. So we're going to use this in an air gapped mode. There was an option actually in the app to pair it over a QR code and to use that as our data exchange mechanism. We can also, oh, that's nice. We can actually view our addresses on this device itself. So this is an on device address explorer that allows us to basically see all of the different addresses that we were using before. Right, so if I go and hit receive, it actually just gives me the same Bitcoin address over and over and over again. Um, a lot of these wallets do that now by default, just to sort of make Bitcoin behave in a similar way to how Ethereum and stuff behaves, which isn't great for privacy. And what about in settings? So settings, we have all of our things like lock screen, brightness here, air gap mode. Okay, so this kills Bluetooth, USB and NFC. Right, and then we have to do everything using the little camera here at the back. Uh, we can also customize our home screen. What can we do with security? So we can change the device authentication. USB lock, what's that? We can choose whether it stays unlocked whether it's connected over USB, change the pin, as well as do some safety checks. So that enforces ver uh, derivation path, matching specific coins and things like that. And yeah, this was the uh, fingerprint, but we won't, won't go back into that. We can go into wallet. Oh uh, yeah, so we can do a recovery check and we can make sure that everything matches what we expect. We can turn passphrase on and off on this device here as well. And interestingly, we can actually turn Trezor compatibility on and off and just plug that into my computer. We can probably actually just use this in Trezor Suite. Ah, yes, so the reason we're getting this error is that these one key devices present as a Trezor T. However, they do not have an officially recognized build number that Trezor Suite is expecting. So by default, Trezor Suite is going to throw you this error saying that the firmware revision check has failed. So if we just want that message to go away, if we go into device and scroll down to the bottom and turn off firmware authenticity check, it will allow it to happily probably use this one key and have it present as a Trezor T. There we go. So now if I go into dashboard, it's working exactly like a Trezor T. And if we open up legacy SegWit accounts, we can actually see uh, that Bitcoin transaction that I just made before. So actually we can see at the bottom, we can scroll across. So what else do we have? FIDO keys. So we can use this as a uh, two-factor authenticator for logging into web accounts and things like that, which is very handy. We can go into backup. Ah, oh, okay, this is very cool. Oh, this is brilliant. All right, so basically we have two options here. So we can choose one key key tag, which will show us, okay, so first of all, we have to run our recovery check. 
press back up and it will give us probably the dot map for a one key key tag. Ah, that is really nice. So you don't have to manually go encoding your key. If you want to store it on a one key key tag, you can just follow those dots there. And if I say done, is it going to prompt us to verify it? No. The thing I'm actually excited about is this one key light. I actually did a video on the one key light back here. And the biggest issue back when I made that video is you could only use the one key light to back up seed phrases from the mobile app. So from hot wallets, not uh, cold hardware wallets or any of the other hardware one key devices. It looks like that has changed, which is very good. Okay, so I'll just put in my device pin. I'm gonna do the recovery check again. Okay, so get started. So I've got my one key light here, which is actually got nothing on it. So it will just say continue. Oh, hang on. Whoop, there we go. Set one key light pin. I'll just set this to one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Connect again. Okay, continue. Nice. So now we actually have the seed from here on this one key light, which is brilliant. So with one tap, we have securely backed up the seed phrase from this hardware wallet onto this NFC based smart card, which has its own pin protecting it, meaning that you can do things uh, like store this in locations that may or may not be secure. And you can easily just do things like stick them in an NFC protective sleeve and send them through the post. This functionality is very similar to the open source Seedkeeper cards that I reviewed over here. And the key thing for all of these NFC based smart card backups is to remember that if you're using them to store seeds from hardware wallets, you're going to want to avoid loading those seeds into the mobile app unless you're in some sort of recovery situation where you no longer have access to your hardware device. All right, so there's NFT galleries for if you're into NFTs and stuff, and uh, also just some tips, uh, which is really nice, actually, a whole bunch of documentation just on the device itself. Actually, one thing I want to see, let's see if we can unlock it with the fingerprint. Is that actually going to work? Yes, it actually did. Okay, so the fingerprint unlock does actually work, although it had a bit of trouble registering my fingerprint at first. All right, now let's have a quick look at this app. What else can we do? So let's see. So we can scan QR, we can lock my one key. I guess we can manage our one key pro. Change the home screen to be whatever we want. Device authentication. Oh, that's the uh, genuine check. So we can redo that at any time. Nice. Verify all of those little bits. Say continue and check for updates. Oh yes, in here is also where we can turn on BIP39 passphrase if we want that. That is an advanced feature, so I won't worry about that for now. I'll just say cancel. And we can see information about our device there. We can actually use multiple different hardware wallets with this app just all in one place, but we won't worry about that for now. And let's see, so we can have an address book. So we can basically uh, have whitelisted addresses and things like that on here. I'll just set the password for this wallet to be Five, six. Enable passcode protection, sure. So this is protection for the app itself. We can just add addresses into our address book, whitelist them and put in different sort of commentary and things like that, which is all nice. And what else can we do? Go to settings. I guess let's we'll close that. So basically we can back up the data in this app to Google Drive, though that doesn't back up the seed off our hardware wallet. Uh, we can use one key light, just like I demonstrated in this video over here. Uh, and we can also use it with the one key key tag. All the usual stuff like currencies, themes, biometrics, lock and unlock. Uh, we can actually change the nodes and things that we're using, as well as change derivation paths and even customize transactions. I wonder if it'll work with Sparrow. It probably will actually work just as a Trezor. Let's see. So connect hardware wallet. Let's just scan. One key pro. Oh, that's cool. So it actually picks it up as a one key pro. It doesn't just think it's a trezor, or at least knows the difference. There we go. And if I go into here and hit receive, I actually, yeah, it's behaving like a proper Bitcoin wallet. So I'm actually getting a fresh address each time. So if I click display address, and just send some Bitcoin there. Noticed on the OneKey website that it actually says this supports Spectre. 
which makes me think maybe it actually supports PSBT. So let's just see if I unplug that and say create transaction, finalize for signing. If I show a QR code, what is going to happen if I use this? So I'll say scan. Oh, hello. There we go. So that, that address looks correct. The amount looks correct. If I say continue, yep, all of the details for the transaction are there. Bang, transaction signed. Let's see if Sparrow can scan this. Scan QR. Looks like it. Bang, broadcast transaction, done. All right, that is very cool. And the interesting thing here though, is that there is no micro SD slot. So the QR code based transactions will work fine for smaller transactions, but for big and complicated transactions, uh, you will need to do them over USB or Bluetooth because doing some of them over QR can be really painful. And the other cool thing about OneKey is that everything is still open source. We can jump onto their GitHub and have the current firmware releases all just there instructions on how to build the firmware and run an emulator as well if you want, which is very cool. Though it doesn't look like the firmware is currently reproducible. And there's actually a bit of drama on the GitHub page where the Wallet Scrutiny people are essentially discussing with the OneKey team about the lack of reproducible builds. But unfortunately, the OneKey folk don't seem to actually understand uh, what is being asked for in terms of being able to reproduce from source the binary files. Their instructions here are basically just directing users to verify that the checksum of what you download from their releases page from GitHub actually matches the binary on the device. And in terms of other advanced features, I just gave Multisig a spin in Sparrow with this as well. Though the interesting thing here is that uh, it actually can't do everything a Trezor T can do in terms of Multisig. So if I try and say, you know, display address, there we go. So it's now detected as a one key pro. And if I try and say display address, you can see it's sort of thinking about it here on the device and in Sparrow, but we never actually get an address uh, to be able to verify on the device, let alone being able to save the multisig in a stateful way onto the device or something like that. And even though we can't verify the receiver addresses on this device, we'll see if we can at least sign multi-sig transactions. So I've just sent some funds uh, to this wallet. So if we make a transaction with two outputs and finalize that for signing and say sign, uh, we'll just sign this one over USB rather than using the air gapped process. Let's see, can we at least sign a multi-sig transaction? Okay. So it's got our multi-sig transaction there. So we can actually just accept that and say continue. And okay, so it has identified what the change output is and has suppressed that, but it would have just been trusting that based on what came from the wallet. Summary time. So the OneKey Pro is definitely a big improvement from the previous OneKey devices. When I previously looked at these OneKey devices two years ago, they were pretty much, you know, slightly modified Trezor clones, whereas the OneKey Pro is definitely uh, developed now in its own direction. It has a whole bunch of advanced features which aren't simply lifted from the Trezor One or Trezor T. And it also has some new innovations that allow you to be able to bring together other products that OneKey offer on the backup side to be able to use them to their maximum potential with the one key hardware wallet itself. You know, the device has definitely gone for the sort of premium look and feel, you know, looking really very much like a smartphone. And the good thing here is that the vendor supplied app that comes with it is perfectly fine and is gonna be helpful for new users and still plenty of scope there for more advanced users who want to use it with third party software uh, or even do things like multi-sig. The commitment to open source is also great, though obviously there is the catch there in terms of the builds not actually being reproducible, uh, but still it is better than a lot of the other purely closed source options out there. I've added the OneKey Pro onto my hardware wallet feature comparison, and if you think a OneKey Pro would help boost security of your setup and want to help me out in the process, I've got an affiliate link in the description. Other than that, if you have any other questions with the device, just leave a reply in the comment section. I do my best to answer all of them. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.